Russian immigrants in Jerusalem market collect their food from the day's leftovers. For many new Soviet arrivals, the promised land has been a bitter disappointment. With over 200,000 Soviets already in Israel, their presence is stretching the country's resources to the limit. Signs of the Soviet presence are changing the face of Israel. When the expected million Soviets are finally here, Russian will be Israel's second language. But the new immigrants, often relegated to working in dingy backroom jobs, are questioning why they ever came at all. One Soviet Olim, as they're known, commits suicide each month. Raphael Kiel lost his good friend, Igor Jakobsen, who committed suicide three weeks ago. Uh, every Russian feels that he's out of life when he, has, uh, he, when he doesn't have a job. It's just out of life. You, no one needs you. And uh, little change. Uh, everybody heard in Israel, Israel propag propagations, they were telling that we need us, we need us, come. Here we see no one needs us. In the Soviet Union, they had homes. But here in Carmel, in northern Israel, many live in this tent village in the local park. They come because they can no longer afford the high cost of living in Israel. Each day, more tents are pitched by families with nowhere else to go. For their first year in Israel, they get a government subsidy. But when that runs out, they're on their own. Basia Gutner is 77. She left the Soviet Union for a better life. She doesn't understand why the government paid for her air ticket to Israel but now can't give her a roof over her head. Confronted with unsympathetic officials, Basia wonders whether Israel is really an improvement on her previous life. Когда с мамой так случилось, меня просто брата и маму посадили, а меня выгнали на улицу, девчонку еще. When the Soviets do find work, it's often filling positions previously taken by Palestinians. Since the Gulf War, most Palestinians have been barred from working outside the territories. Over 50% of the new Soviet arrivals are well qualified and left good jobs to come to Israel. The government believes they must be prepared to accept a change in their jobs. For example, we have in the, this immigration who has come, thousands of dentists who have come. What do you do with thousands of dentists? You have to find them other jobs. You have to retrain them. For example, here we have hundreds of mine engineers who have come from the Soviet Union. Hundreds. What do you do with them here? We have no minds. At Beersheba University, Professor Valentin works as the night watchman. In the Soviet Union, he was the chief scientist in Tashkent. He fought hard to attain his former position, despite the prejudice he suffered as a Jew. Now he thinks Soviet immigrants are not being given a fair chance. No, I think that до сих пор нет какой-то государственной программы реальной, что главный принцип здесь такой, что спасение утопающих дело рук свое самих утопающих. Это, ну, может быть, это не главное, а главное, что критериев нет, что ли? Today, shouted at for cleaning the university too slowly, biologist Emily Klugman tells friends and relatives back home not to come to Israel. But there are Israelis who see the influx of highly qualified Soviets as a potential godsend, and they believe Israel has an obligation to them. We have been fighting for uh, emigration from Russia for more than 30 years, 
and now suddenly uh, there is no possibility to absorb them. And I think uh, those who have been for years and years marching with slogans, let my people go, should realize that now when uh, the people is going and even more than they could dream, their responsibility is even greater than before because before it was simple, just shout the slogan. Now you are supposed to become involved, involved financially, involved as uh, managers. Uh, it could uh, make Israel potentially as a, a kind of a Japan or Korea because um, Israel is not possessing any uh, natural resources like oil or, or coal or whatever. And the only um, treasure Israel possesses, and now more than ever before, is uh, uh, intellectual potential, is its uh, skills and talents of people, whether it's in, in physics or chemistry or medicine or engineering. Beyond the difficulties they face finding work, many immigrants are Jews only on paper. In the Soviet Union, unable to freely practice the Jewish faith, many adopted Christianity. They joined the Russian Orthodox Church, which didn't suffer such severe restrictions as the synagogues. Lika, a Christian, arrived in Israel a year and a half ago. With a Jewish grandmother, she qualified for the Olim program, but she feels ostracized from Israeli society. In Russian, I never was in synagogue, never. I was very often in a Christian church. This is my home. Uh, this is a good uh, country, free. Yes, if you want to be a Christian, yes, be Christian. But don't tell about this. <laughs> don't be open, <laughs> because it's not good for, uh, for a limb. Uh, something else, uh, this country opened the door for Jewish people. Yes, I have one uh, part of blood Jewish. But in the USSR, somebody called me Jewish, Jewish, Jewish. But in Israel, if I'll tell I'm Christian, they will be hit me also, maybe. As a musician, Lika occasionally works for a band who are tonight hired to play at a wealthy American bar mitzvah. It coincides with Jerusalem's Reunification Day festivities, both occasions holy to the devout Israelis. On Jerusalem Day, Israelis celebrate the reunification of their capital following the occupation of the West Bank and Gaza in 1967. The Israelis remain adamant that Jerusalem will never again be divided, regardless of any settlement that may be reached with the Palestinians. The Morgenstern family and their pets arrived in Israel two weeks ago. They share this cramped two-room flat until they find somewhere larger. The cost of housing in Israel will soon eat up their money, but they have another option. There is cheaper subsidized housing available on the outskirts of Jerusalem. Most Soviet immigrants are city people and not prepared to move into dangerous settlements in the Palestinian territories. Instead, they help the Israelis fill apartments technically in the Palestinian territories. After years of development, Israeli Jerusalem has expanded well into Palestinian lands. Since 1967, the occupied Palestinian parts of Jerusalem have been encroached upon by the building of Israeli suburbs, effectively increasing the size of Israeli West Jerusalem. One of the earliest developments was at Gilo. Many Soviets who came to live here have no understanding of complex local politics. Although many Soviets willingly accept their controversial role in securing a Jewish presence in the territories, others question the part they play. Sergei is a writer who came to Gilo a year ago. He suspects many immigrants are being quietly manipulated. When we came in Gilo, we didn't know anything about any green lines. Uh, I knew uh, in the abstract form that there are some Palestinian territories and I knew that there was a, an East Jerusalem, but what was included in this East Jerusalem, I didn't know. So I came without any knowing even about it. You know, I didn't know that, that this is an occupied or, or uh, taken or territory, you know. And after that, somebody told me that, you know where you are, you are in, not in, in, in your territory. So I was amazed, you know. 
The Palestinians are angered by Israeli expansion. They see the Soviet immigrant policy as an extension of Israel's military machine, working towards the permanent confiscation of their lands. But the Israeli government maintains East Jerusalem never was, never will be a Palestinian city. Whatever solution will be found, Jerusalem is, will be, and will remain the capital of the state of Israel. It doesn't matter whether we build in East Jerusalem, or in West Jerusalem, or in the center of Jerusalem, or in the outskirts of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is one, and it doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter anymore. It, Jerusalem has been united in 1967, and it doesn't matter now. Jerusalem is one. What the Palestinians are asking is, how long will it take, at the current rate of expansion, for Jerusalem to cover the entire West Bank. Most Israelis don't question the immigration policy, but whether or not the Soviets continue to arrive will surely depend on how the Israelis respond to the difficulties the Soviet Olim currently face. <laughs>